Uh, now, the Mount Shasta region is well known for a diverse array of geology uh, as well as botany. You got the Cascades, uh, a series of volcanoes to the east, uh, Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen, and then to the west, uh, you have a, a very uh, uh, interesting thing going on with the Klamath and Siskiyou Mountains, known for their serpentine and ultramorphic rocks, and then of course, in turn, the multiple different plant species that such geology creates. Uh, culturally, the area is kind of a cesspool. It's known for uh, lots of middle-aged uh, white guys, uh, not even white guys, just middle-aged white people, uh, many of them new age, who have since uh, turned to odd conspiracy theories and believe in such ridiculous ass things as flat earth and uh, lizard people, uh, as well as aliens living in the mountain. But uh, one thing I do want to show you really quick is uh, uh, showy milkweed. It's uh, Asclepias speciosa, and it's just thriving here on the side of Highway 89, just uh, east of the town of Mount Shasta. Uh, now such things as uh, that uh, enormous dormant volcano covered in snow uh, are a nice reprieve from the cultural de-evolution going on on the human landscape all around this region. Again, there's lots of uh, meth heads, lots of tweakers, uh, lots of new age people, and uh, quasi-scientific uh, quack science weirdos uh, as discussed before. But let's get into the uh, morphology of this Asclepius flower really quick, okay? Because uh, this is one of the most complex uh, flowers among North American flowering plants. There's a lot going on here, and it can take uh, quite some time to understand what's really, uh, what's really happening with these. Now, of course, among the genus Asclepius, you got about 130 species in North America and about six species in South America. Uh, all of them, except for Asclepius tuberosa, uh, which has orange flowers, all of them produce this uh, milky white latex uh, in their vascular tissues. That's the secondary chemistry of which uh, Asclepius the genus is known for. And uh, that uh, milky white latex, uh, as well as the cardiac glycosides, uh, are what make this such an attractive plant, host plant, to the butterflies that want to consume the tissue and thereby bioaccumulate uh, those uh, those toxins and uh, cardiac glycosides, etc., within their own tissue. The monarch butterflies are a prime example of this. It, now, like I said, many of the other species of milkweeds uh, are not a, a ideal for showing you uh, the morphology of the genus because the, many of the other uh, species, like Asclepius fascicularis, are just too small. But Asclepius speciosa is ideal because these flowers are just so goddamn large as you can tell. So let's go uh, from the bottom up basically, all right? Let's look at this. First you got a compound umbel of flowers. Now umbel's just a type of uh, compound inflorescence that is many uh, flowers clustered into one. So you got a compound umbel and then moving from the bottom up uh, you have the individual pedicel which is the stem that the flowers on and then you got, uh, let's look right here, you got sepals there at the base. The sepals are those bracts at the base. And then just above the sepals, the next layer right above those sepals are the petals. And uh, in this Asclepius speciosa, they reflex. That is, they curve back. And then moving right along right there, uh, right here, you got the, let's see if I can get it right. You got the hoods. See those white things? Those are the hoods. And then if you look even closer, you got the hoods. And then you got what's called a horn that little hook looking thing poking out of it. Now the hoods are where the nectar is and I can smell the nectar from this flower uh, from where I am about a foot away. From where my uh, loud ass mug is uh, uttering these words to you, I can smell the nectar deep inside that hood. And basically what's going on is that, you know, it's quite different from the structure of a normal flower, okay? In a normal flower, you got stamens and you got a stigma that is the male and the female parts uh, just, you know, exposed to the open air. Not so with the Asclepius flower. The stigma is actually inside. See that little slit in between those two white hoods? That little slit right there looks like some curtains you could just open. The stigma is in there. That's the stigmatic chamber in there, and that slit is called the stigmatic slit. Uh, now, due to the uh, probably 800 milligrams of caffeine I've just consumed, go easy on me, it's my only goddamn vice, uh, I'm, I'm unable to hold this knife properly to show you, but there you go, there's the stigmatic slit. And so, uh, the, and the, the odd thing here too I want to show you, okay, the hoods, you might say, why are they designed like that? And what's the purpose of the horn? To be honest, 
uh, that's the point of co uh, conjecture still. It's, it's, it's somewhat uh, controversial. Though I think most people tend to lean towards, uh, most people studying milkweeds tend to lean toward the idea that the purpose of that horn is basically to manipulate the insect's behavior to get it to do a little dance so that uh, it will eventually, the goal here of course with all milkweeds is that the insect will slip their little uh, foot inside uh, that slit, that stigmatic slit. And in doing so, uh, either side of that stigmatic slit has little hairs on it that direct the insect's leg uh, to go up. So if that insect, say a bumblebee, wants to get its leg out of that slit, he's got to pull his leg up, and in doing so, he uh, pulls out this boomerang-shaped apparatus, and on either either end of that is a uh, uh, pollinia. So uh, basically what's, what's going on, the pollinia is the plural form of pollinium, is that you know most plants have pollen granules microscopic pollen granules in milkweeds the pollen granules are amassed about 500 per mass are, are they're aggregated into these things called pollinia which are just basically uh, little nodules of pollen orchids are another family that do this of course no relation to milkweeds that's convergent evolution they both evolved it on their own but either way uh, the pollinia on milkweeds exist at either end of this boomerang shaped thing and the, the arms of the boomerang are called the translator arms the whole thing being called the translator apparatus and then at the mountain peak of the boomerang you have what's called the corpusculum and the corpusculum is at the uh, top of that stigmatic slit so when a bumblebee pulls his leg out of that stigmatic slit he pulls out the whole boomerang and uh, and and then flies ideally to another flower. Another interesting thing is that once that boomerang uh, containing the pollinia is exposed to air, the translator arms, uh, the translator arms of the boomerang kind of turn in 90 degrees uh, to uh, make it easier for that uh, pollinia to uh, slip into the stigmatic slit on another flower. So he's basically the transfer, the bumblebee is basically transferring the boomerang from one of those slits to another slit on another flower, and another flower ideally on another plant. Now this whole white thing in the center is called the gynostegium, and that's one of the safe words you would use if you were imprisoned in a milkweed dungeon, okay? Say uh, someone was forcing you to learn this stuff. You got the gynostegium in the center, the horns on the hood, on the, the horns uh, on the sides of the gynoegium, and the horns are poking out of the hoods. And the hoods, of course, is where the nectar chamber is. Then you got the stigmatic slit, and inside the stigmatic slit you got the stigmatic chamber, and on either side of that stigmatic slit you got the pollinia, which are, of course, attached to the corpusculum by the translator arms. Then you got the petals and the sepals, what have you. So this is a very complex flower uh, structure going on, and a lot has to happen. You got to have relatively large pollinators. Oftentimes, uh, honeybees aren't even big enough. The, the honeybees won't be big enough, and they'll actually get their goddamn legs stuck inside that stigmatic slit, and you'll see them in there, and they die. So uh, hopefully, you got you know some appreciation for this genus because they're goddamn fascinating. The flowers are incredibly complex. They smell wonderful, and uh, they're just a fucking marvel of evolution. You know, I mean. The monarchs are cool, but overall, you know, fuck the monarchs. The, the, these flowers in general are pretty fucking fascinating. But I, I don't really mean fuck the, the monarchs. I like the monarchs. I'm just saying appreciate the plant for what it is. All 130 species of Asclepius, not just because they make some pretty butterflies fly around your yard. All right, that's all I got for you. Go fuck yourself. Uh, so anyway, here I am, uh, you know, taking a look at this Asclepius speciosa. It probably makes a couple of the rednecks mad, uh, the local rednecks to see someone appreciating nature you know they, they don't like the tree huggers anybody who displays the mildest amount of scientific literacy or uh, appreciation for uh, what they would call nature uh, seems to enrage them but uh, regardless here you can actually see and up on this plant a uh, real close nice if i could show you there's actually one of the bees got his goddamn leg stuck in this flower remember i was telling you that that uh, you know that happens sometimes you could see right there right there see that little bug leg somebody got stuck and so they said fuck it you know what i gotta get out of here and they just left their leg behind it stuck in that stigmatic slit you know shit happens what are you gonna do he's got five other legs he can rely on but uh, the pollinators are just enjoying this you can see it anyway that's all i got go fuck yourself
Okay, you know what? I keep saying I was going to go, but uh, I keep finding more interesting stuff going on here. This poor bastard actually got stuck in a flower. Remember how I said that happens sometimes? You can see he's kind of a little guy. He doesn't got much mass to him. He's not like one of these fat-ass bumblebees. And this dude is stuck. You can see his, his front leg is stuck in that goddamn stigmatic slit. He, uh, he can't get out. The poor guy. I might free him later and see if I can pull out a polinium uh, with my knife. But, uh, it's, you know, that's how it happens, you know. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the player. Hate the game, okay? That's the way it goes. Sorry. Now, it's a kind of a dangerous spot to be doing this, but this is a healthy uh, patch of uh, the milkweeds. I wonder, uh, you know, it's a, maybe just the rednecks fancy. You know, they got to get uh, take their boat to the lake or work on building their prepper dungeons, you know, their little uh, bomb shelters, whatever they're doing these days. But I want to show you one more thing, and this is another reason to love milkweeds. Look at this dick, eh? And he is a dick. A mosquito got stuck in that goddamn flower. You could see it right there. Asshole, look at you, eh? You're not going nowhere now. She's not going to be feeding on nobody. You're not going to be transmitting that disease to nobody, eh? That's what you get. You're going to be there for the rest of the day until you die. And look at those beautiful flowers. Look at the horns. Making sure the bees, all the bees do a little dance. Most of the things around here, I've seen a couple bumblebees, a couple butterflies, but it mostly seems to be uh, non-native honeybees, uh, which are like livestock. You know, all this stuff about save the bees, fuck the, fuck the honeybees. How about the native bees? Because they're stealing this resource from the native bees. And uh, there's not many native bees. Not seen any sweat bees. Not seen that many bumblebees. Just a lot of uh, non-native invasive honeybees, which of course are overabundant on the landscape, transmit disease to native bees, steal resources from native bees, etc. They're like uh, they're like cows, you know. You want cows instead of elk? I don't know. Whatever. 